this is going to be a great year for buildings and assets. It really is. Uh, you know, we're opening the new city hall, moving in right now, uh, and that's a big event. But we're also opening Owls Creek Marsh Pavilion, Veterinary Care Center, and the Burton Station Fire EMS Station this year. And so uh, it's, it's fun to see projects come to f completion. Uh, we're also making solid progress on the Building 2, now Building 3, Building 11 renovation, and looking forward to putting Virginia Beach Police Department, Police Admin, and First Precinct into their new home. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. So this slide pretty much speaks for itself. I've got 33 projects in the Buildings and Assets CIP, uh, and I'll talk, but the uh, four of them are American Rescue Plan Act funded and one shuttered venues grant, which really, really was great for us this year in, in so many ways. Uh, programmatically, this year's Buildings and Assets CIP shows very little change from the previous year. 26 of the 33 projects and programs have no change. Uh, we're not asking for any more money. It's, it's just keeping things moving along as they are. Uh, it's not a year for major new initiatives in the CIP. Uh, when we get to the end, if you have questions on any of these, I'll take them, but I wasn't going to walk through all 26 of the no-change projects. There are some projects with modifications, and I will be talking in detail about those. Uh, and I've got a separate slide on each one of them, but there's, <coughs> there's five where we're, where we're asking for additional funds or realigned funds. There are also two new projects that I'll be talking about. And so let's jump right into ones with major changes. So um, various buildings, rehab and renewal four. That's the CIP that I use every year to maintain the city's 382 city-owned buildings and, and more than 800 structures uh, by contract. I mean, I have my maintenance force of various trades that are in the buildings, but this is the dollars that I use to get contract design done, contract maintenance work done, and buy certain types of materials. Uh, this is being, we're requesting that this be plussed up from $3.2 million a year to $3.8 million a year. Uh, that extra 600000 gives us three hundred to address a backlog of maintenance and repair items that are coming up, starting to show in, in our public libraries. Uh, we also had a, an audit done of Americans with Disabilities Act deficiencies in the city. Actually, several years ago, done. I think it was done in the uh, summer of 2019. Uh, they really looked at 12 facilities. They identified a few things that were wrong. Uh, we are correcting those, but part of the agreement with the Department of Justice is that we go back and look at all of the city's buildings. Uh, so to go look at 382 buildings and do a comprehensive survey on any Americans with Disabilities uh, Act potential deficiencies and correct those is going to require some money. Uh, not sure that it's going to be 300000 a year for a long time, uh, but that was put in the budget so that I'll have the ability to move forward on that when that agreement is signed. One near and dear to your heart, and I'm sure we'll talk during questions about this as well, uh, the escalator replacement. Uh, so, uh, truth be told, uh, no, we, uh, we, we asked for $4 million for this project, thinking full well that was enough money to design and replace the escalator. Uh, at that time, and these escalators are huge, there's eight of them, you can't take them in and out through the door. It's simply not possible. Uh, to cost effectively do it, you would take them out whole and bring in a new one whole and set that down. The only way to do that is to take the curtain wall off the interior court. So if you come up to what used to be the front of the building, you can actually take the glass and the frame off the stairwell entrance and take the escalators out and put the new ones in. Or you can take the roof off the building and lift them up with a crane. Uh, we got into design and looked at that, and that caused major inconvenience for the court's building. Uh, it, it, for a long period of time. Uh, and so we walked away from that and said, can we do this uh, without doing that? And, and the way you do that is you rebuild escalators in place. So you take the escalator and you take it apart and you bring in all the parts and you just build a new escalator where the old one was. Uh, so we decided to go in that direction. That led us to take a really look at the heavy duty requirements for escalators, the staging, utility relocations, renovating that room, and realized we didn't have enough money. Uh, we also got hit with material price increases, huge material pr price increases, 250 to 300 percent on, on some of the items that are going into this building. So now the whole project is really 10.6 million, and I'm asking uh, for your support in funding the additional six and a half to get this done. The design is done. Uh, when we have the funding, we would start this work as early as this fall, uh, and they would be done in about 15 months, so it would finish up in the spring of 24. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk more about... Uh, Building 10, 10A and 10B if you've got questions at the end. Beach maintenance facility. Uh, again, our, the city's uh, absolutely worst condition facility. You have already put this in the program. 
at, at $20 million previously. When it was funded last year, again, with design in FY24 and construction in FY25, there was a balance to complete of 700000 that was not programmatically available. Uh, again, working with management services, they found those funds for uh, FY25 for the construction, put it in, and this replaces our 45-year-old facilities at 14th, 15th, and Park. Uh, really critical facilities for the condition of our oceanfront. This is where beach ops, traffic ops, street sweeping, building maintenance for the oceanfront, parks and rec landscaping, and the planning parking management group all do their nesting for the work that they do down at the oceanfront. Uh, and we are exploring a new site at, at the west end of Southern Avenue. It's the same site. We saw a PPEA come in about six, seven months ago, talked about that site. Uh, that's still the preferred site, but we have some, some hoops to jump through to make that a reality. But the, right now, that's the plan. Euclid Yard, uh, really right on the heels of beach maintenance facility. Uh, Euclid Yard is in, in, in pretty bad condition. Uh, this uh, is not fully funded in this program. We're not asking for full funding, uh, but we are asking, for, actually we are at this time, uh, 1.5 million for design in 27 and 13 million will go into 28. Uh, this is an essential site for the city, again, for landscape services, public safety, fueling, and public works operations, highway operations for the entire western and northwestern part of the site, city. Uh, this funding uh, would renovate, replace all the facilities on the current site. Uh, again, paying close attention, working with Mr. Adams and economic development on what is planned for that area, uh, that could change. Uh, but at this point, uh, we need to do something sooner rather than later to keep that work ongoing in those locations. Correction Center renewal. Uh, you may recall in past budget years that this was actually funded with $500,000 in FY25, 526, and 527. Um, there's a long story as to how that got to be, but it's, it's a project. It's a project that has a design phase and a construction phase. I really can't use $500,000 incrementally in any way. Uh, so what we did was we took the 500 out of those three years. Uh, we put the design dollars, which is $1.1 million in 28, and then we would come back next year and ask for the balance for construction, which would be $13 million. Within the Correctional Center, there's a lot of stuff that just can't be maintained anymore. Uh, it's in really challenging condition, uh, but you have to do it section by section. Uh, so it is... Uh, it's, it's a whole list of what you might think are normal, small things, but you have to do them all at the same time, all in groups. And so we're going to package it up into a project and, and, and give it the love that it needs. New project, uh, first one on the list, uh, MOCA building envelope rehabilitation. Uh, so we've talked about this before, and there was a city council report that was provided which talked about some studies that we've done and what we understand about the exterior envelope of the building, the, the roof, the curtain wall, the storefront windows and doors. Uh, are we leaking water right now? No. Could we start leaking in the near future? Yes. So it's time to replace those things, just like replacing the windows on your home or your, or your door. Uh, it, it can't be fixed <coughs> with paint anymore. Uh, also, the uh, concern with repointing areas of brick masonry, again, something that isn't normally maintained, but as we start to watch that closely, we're starting to see some areas where, where that could happen. To correct those things, requires $2.3 million uh, to be done as a package. And this current request is to put this money in fiscal year 27. And my last new project is the Leroy Road impound lot and remedial action. Uh, probably the first thing I started to work on when I got here in the summer of 2015. Uh, you'll remember this was a Virginia Beach Police Department firing range that closed some years ago. Uh, and it had contaminated soil from the firing activities that took place there. Uh, we got ourselves enrolled in the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality Voluntary Remediation Program, uh, have gone through the study and the design phase, and now we're ready to remove contaminated soil in some areas, others get encapsulated, monitoring wells get put in, and, and then we turn that into an improved Virginia Beach Police Department motor, motor vehicle impound lot. So right now they're kind of parking cars on the hill and a little bit on the bottom. Uh, we can meet the objectives of remediating the environmental hazard and giving them a better place to park uh, for $1.4 million. And, <coughs> and this is something that, uh, that we have to do. Uh, the, the state is requiring us to take care of this, maybe not in this particular situation, but we don't have a choice about whether or not we remediate this site. Projects underway in conclusion. Uh, again, New City Hall moving in between now and June. Uh, it is open to the public as of this morning, uh, and if you haven't gone over there and walked in, I invite you to do so. If, if you'd like a tour, uh, now that it is open, please give me a holler. Uh, 
the operations facilities renovations for building two, now building three and 11. Uh, building two will be done in the summer of 2023. Uh, again, this is a, we are awaiting the shipment of a lot of electrical equipment that uh, is just delayed because of the delay of stuff. Uh, and that added quite a significant amount of time to that project. Uh, building one, or now building three, this building will also finish at the same time. So as soon as we get moved out of here, I'm, I'm coming into this building and we'll start to demolish it. And it's a 13, 14 month construction window from the time we start demolition until we move planning and public utilities back from their leased facilities into here. Um, and then building 11, where the police come out of, uh, as soon as they move out, we'll start demolishing that building and public works. And uh, a portion of IT will move into that building in the summer of 2024, and then we'll be back. Uh, also a reminder that Owls Creek and Marsh Pavilion Veterinary Care Center opens in early July. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting time at the aquarium when that happens. Uh, Burton Station Fire EMS opens in late July, early August. Uh, again, we already talked about Judicial Center Escalator, uh, which would open or be done in the spring of 24. Uh, the ARPA projects, again, the Parks and Rec HVAC, the Central Utility Plant HVAC, again, Courts Building, Direct Digital Control, Parks and Rec Construction Yard, and then our Shuttered Venues Grant, um, Virginia Aquarium Marine Animal Care Center, Animal Holding Facility, uh, all funded with other people's money that came to us because of the circumstances we've been through. Uh, and it's been wonderful. Uh, we really, they're all in design right now, so I don't have completion dates for those, but I'll be updating you. And I'm, I'm very sensitive on the time we have to spend the ARPA funds and uh, the Shuttered Venues Grant stuff. Uh, so I'm sure you uh, may have a number of questions on things. Happy to entertain them at this time. Rosemary. Very exciting. Is there any update of when we might actually be able to start having council members, council meetings next door? Right now, the, the, the best estimate is the middle of June. Uh, so here's what happened. The same international chip shortage that is hurting everyone in the electronics world hit us. The, uh, all the information technology equipment is in the building. Uh, information technology was absolutely fabulous working with us. All the building stuff is done, but the audio visual equipment that has the chips in it is only here in pieces. Uh, and so we're working with the, the vendor who's working with the supplier, who's working with the manufacturer to give us updates on it's several thousand items of things that have to come together to make this happen. And they, they really believe that it would be late May to early June when it gets here. Uh, obviously, those that operate that equipment need some time for us to install it and to practice on it. But uh, at this point, we're looking at mid-June. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, I wish I could do something about it, but uh, we're, we're caught up in that. Okay, Guy, and then Bar um, Rocky, then Barbara. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nichols. I know uh, it's been a busy time for you. Uh, I don't know how you juggle all these projects, particularly one. City Hall, we're all looking forward to being in there. And it's a beautiful building. Thank you. Um, I want to just ask about MOGA. I've not talked to the director recently, nor to you, about that. But um, I know that she had very serious concerns because of the her schedule in terms of the accreditation process for the museum and the, and the safety of the items that would be displayed in the museum and, and, and the functioning of the entire museum in that context. I'm just wondering, have you, have you had discussions directly with the director about that? I have. Uh, so now the, uh, the reaccreditation timing really, uh, uh, MOCA starts that on about the 1st of June in 2023, uh, and they have a period of about 16, 17 months through the fall of 24 uh, where they do their institutional self-study. So they, they look at everything they do, and it's a whole spectrum of things, facilities being one of them. Uh, and they submit that per the American Association of Museums guidelines. Uh, that gets submitted on the 1st of November of 2024. So from June of 23 to November of 24, they're working on that. Uh, then in the spring of 25, uh, between um, during the month of March, they come out and they do a site visit. Uh, and then on the end of June of 25, they issue a, a statement. Uh, it is probable, but not certain, that the, not the building envelope condition that it's in right now could present some risk to that. Uh, so it would be most advantageous if we were able to afford to correct most of those deficiencies prior to the completion of that study for, for their... Uh, 
So I can speak okay. to that. And Mr. Mayor, to Council Member Tower, um, once staff became aware of that email that Ms. Ryan sent, we weren't initially told about that timeline to that succinct level when we put together the proposed budget. So I huddled staff together. And it's not something that we would need to look at specifically for this year. But I do think the 27 timeline of when we initially proposed needs to be reconsidered to possibly move forward as part of the next year's capital budget. It's probably likely that we need to move it forward into fiscal year 24, fiscal year 24, to start at least the first part of um, that work, which will be to do the roof. You know, so that's something that staff has penciled in for further review to propose possibly um, an, ex an acceleration of that timeline at, for the next budget. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I think that's uh, important if we possibly can do that. Um, and I assume that's probably the quickest we could do it anyway, mm -hmm. gi given time time lags. But thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, Rocky and then Barbara. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tom, I hate to keep plowing up the same old ground here, but we've heard two chief judges talk about this uh, escalator replacement. And and, and we heard testimony earlier from Judge Lilly about it being a 30-plus-year-old building. And we're looking at $10 million, and it won't be done for two years to put an escalator in place in, in that building. And, and I don't know how people movers work. I don't know what the mechanics are behind it. But is that the only option is to sink $10.5 million in, into that escalator to move people up and down? Or, or what are our options? That just seems like a lot of money for for an escalator that okay uh, so the building was designed to move 80% of the people in the building via escalator okay. uh, and only 20% via elevator and those were mostly uh, building staff and people with handicapped conditions that couldn't use the escalator so the escalator the eight of them is the prime mover okay. uh, I, I guess it's 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 the right amount of money I know it seems like a big number yeah. uh, but but it is not an unfair price in any way uh, so if we're going to continue to operate in that building, really, for any time at all, we've got to replace it. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. I think that escalator has been wrong since the day the building <laughs> opened. Uh. It, well, it was, it was not a heavy-duty commercial elevator to begin with. And really, uh, I've had an electrician at that escalator every day uh, since I got here in 2015 resetting the escalator continuously throughout the day. Uh, so it, it, it and, and part of the thing is if, if you were to go out and come down the escalator like a young child does sometime and jump up and down on the touch pad at the end, it just stops. Uh, and, you know, and the repair guy needs to come out and take the panel off the end and reset it and it goes. Uh, so it, it, it's that type of thing. It, it, it's not hazardous in any way. It just stops a lot and then it's just metal stairs that aren't particularly convenient. It seems like we missed a, a shot at it 30 years ago when we didn't get the original contractor to come back and do something about it. Yeah, but that wasn't my question. Yes, ma'am. When you were making your comments, you used the word demolish when you were talking about this building mm -hmm. and also 23. Now, we're not demolishing these no. buildings. You so, want to clarify? Yes, I have missed. Uh, we are taking the interior of this building down to nothing but columns and concrete decks uh, in order to remove all of the hazardous material that is in the walls above the ceiling. Uh, there, there wasn't a way to do a partial renovation of this building because of the asbestos contamination from the fireproofing material. Uh, so that'll happen. Uh, it'll look a lot like a parking garage in here, uh, similar to what Building 2 was like when we did that interior interior demolition. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, it, there'll be a time when we get done with that, it'll be kind of fun to walk in here and, and, and look at what it's like when it's like that. Then we will rebuild it. But the entire exterior envelope of the building stays in place. It, it does not change in any way. Uh, it'll look just like it looks now. Make plain to everybody that yes, that's what's going to happen. Back on the Leroy Road uh, lot, it, when that was first discovered that yes. there were problems, there was a concern that it maybe had gotten into the water and so forth, and we let the community know that it was right. an issue. I'm assuming that it turned out that there was nothing beyond this particular mound Correct. None of the correct? testing showed any of the water that had moved into the Foxfire neighborhood, or any contamination had moved into the groundwater in the Foxfire neighborhood. So all of it was just confined to this, this mound, and so that what you're doing now is going to clarify all of that, and it won't be a problem anymore. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just just to be sure that we did 
follow through and, and know that we right. can assure the people around there that there was no contamination beyond this point. Now, as far as part of this process, too, uh, Department of Environmental Quality will require that we do a public announcement of the of the construction, uh, which would likely lead to a, a public session or public hearing. So if there are, again, residents that have concern about the work, they can come in and talk to us and to the designers of the project and, and, and get more clarity. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hey, thanks a bunch. You have an awesome responsibility. <laughs> Uh, you know, just keeping the, the city in a lot of ways on life support with, you know, some, we're an aging city, both in terms of infrastructure, buildings, and, you know, people my age, uh, you know, they're good. But once again, you are just doing a tremendous job. And I'll tell you what, I think uh, the new building, you know, as, as we say, uh, you know, this is going to be the people's building. It, you know, it took a while, but guess what? It's going to deliver. Thank you very yes, much for your efforts. You're welcome. Thanks.